Morocco. Home to majestic landscapes, bewitching sands and incredible dunes. It's the perfect playground for the fifth and final round of the World Rally Raid Championship. Welcome to the Rally to Maroc. Luciano and Toby looks like they have a, a good fight for the World Championship, so sure is a super interesting race. Indeed, Toby Price trails Luciano Benavides by just nine points in the bikes, and Adrian van Beveren is very much in contention as well. It's been a, a really good season so far, and I'm really looking forward to, to finish here strong. The World Championship is still uh, open, let's say. It's still possible. So I will focus and try to be really fast and strong every kilometer. The field is stacked as ever with plenty of top riders looking for a prestigious win as they build towards the Dakar. Among the contenders is the defending champion Skylar Howes, who has traded Husqvarna for Honda. I'm really, really fortunate to be able to land a spot here on the Monster Energy Honda team. And it's uh, yeah, kind of a dream come true. And I'm excited to let this red girl eat the Moroccan desert. Unfortunately, Howes didn't have long to enjoy his debut crashing out on the prologue. And there were more problems for the Monster Energy Honda team on stage one, as Ricky Brabeck had to withdraw due to technical issues. Ross Branch made a fine start, though, winning the first stage. The Kalahari Ferrari remained consistent throughout, finishing fourth in Morocco and fourth in the W2RC. We needed this before Dakar, for sure. We needed a stage win at this race where everybody's here and uh, just shows us what, where we are with the level that we're at at the moment. And I'm super, super happy. Van Beveren kept believing in his title chances, but like in Argentina, he never quite found his groove in Morocco and finished 35 minutes off the pace. He ends up third in the W2RC for the second season running. Price hoped he might be able to snatch the crown, but like at the Dakar, he fell agonizingly short and had to settle for second. The Aussie won the rally for the third time, but it wasn't enough to topple Benavides. It is what it is. Luciano did a great job, um, led the stage out today and did a good job and kept himself in the championship and, um, yeah, just... Uh, Need my luck to change a little bit. And so all hail Luciano Benavides, the 2023 World Rally Raid champion. He has been exceptionally consistent this season with 10 stage wins and top two finishes at four of the five rounds. Incredible. Uh, I think dreams come true, finally. Uh, it's been a, an amazing year for me to finish like this. Battling the last day with Toby uh, with the mission to open the stage in, in the dunes, it, is, it has a special taste, I, I think, and yeah, I can, I can feel more and more happy than right now. It's, it's really amazing, amazing feeling. Luciano's margin of victory over Price was just four points in what's been a superb battle. Van Beveren, the best of the rest. The Monster Energy Honda team grabbed the manufacturer's crown by just eight points from Red Bull KTM. Romain Dumontier rounded out overall victory in the Rally 2 class by coming second in Morocco. The Frenchman has ended up on the podium of his four rallies this year with victories at the Dakar and the Sonora Rally. Paolo Lucci and Jean-Louis Lupin completing the podium ahead of the rally winner, Bradley Cox. Ardit Kurtai won the Rally 3 class as his nearest rival Massimo Kamuri failed to finish. The Albanian came fourth in Morocco. He will now be gearing up for his first Dakar. Alexander Chapurka was second in the W2RC as Morocco winner Sheikh Yves Jackerman shared third spot with Kamuri. 
Lice Vidas Cancius held on to his world championship lead in the quads. Fourth place among W2RC riders in Morocco was good enough to take the crown ahead of Rodolfo Gioli, with Juraj Varga completing the podium. Cancius winning by nine points, with Gidioli just two ahead of Varga. Nasser Alatia has a near unassailable world championship lead in the cars, but the Qatari is still keen to land a seventh Morocco title. He faces stiff competition, though, from the likes of Audi, BRX, and of course, his fellow Toyota teammates. Everyone wants to win here, but we need to be clever also. We need, you know, like a few points, you know, to win the world champion. But okay, if we can win the race, we'll be good. Well, Alatia made a typically fast start. After winning two of the first three stages, he led Sebastian Loeb by over six minutes in the overall standings, and by the end of stage two, he was already guaranteed the world title. There were mixed fortunes for the Audi team, who were in Morocco to test and prepare for the Dakar. Matthias Ekstrom, Carlos Sainz and Stefan Petter Hansel finished respectively 5th, 6th and 7th after various problems, although both Ekstrom and Petter Hansel took confidence-boosting stage wins in the RSQ e-tron. I think that this is the first one with, uh, in the championship, the world championship for me, so it's a yeah, good feeling, so it was necessary to, to try to get one. After a promising start, Sebastian Loeb endured more frustration. The Frenchman finished as the lowest ranked of the T1 cars in 11th place. His W2RC hopes ended when he drove into a ditch in Argentina, and something very similar happened here on stage four. It was the first, uh, first car on the track, and uh, it was like a, a little hole, and, uh, but I didn't see it. I was like, not fast, but like second gear, and looking for the way, and, just pop, fall in the, in the hole, so it broke front suspension and that's it. Loeb finished fourth in the W2RC after being leapfrogged by Juan Cruz Jacopini. The young Argentine had a strong end to the season, coming second on home soil and then third in Morocco. He continues to learn and to improve with overdrive racing. And the Belgian team really impressed as they locked out the overall podium here in Morocco. Yazid al Raji took his second win of the season after Abu Dhabi, ensuring he would finish as runner-up in the championship. The Saudi avoided any major issues and was ready to pounce when his rivals ran into trouble. He took victory by over half an hour from his teammate, Denis Krotov. Super happy with uh, this uh, season. We are always there when anybody have mistake. We are on the podium, and we are the win uh, this race. That's good for us and good for our team. Alatia didn't get the victory he was hoping for in Morocco, but the Qatari still reigned supreme this season. With three wins out of five, he got the job done despite breaking two drive shafts on stage four. Alatia and Mathieu Bomel defending their title in some style. I'm really so happy you know, to, to win the world champion. Thank for uh, David, thank for uh, the organization, you know. It's amazing rally and it's important, you know, to win the, the, the world champion and to, to defend our title. Alatia finished 24 points clear of Al Raju with third place Jacopini 20 ahead of Loeb. Sebastian Halpern rounds out the top five. Toyota dominated the manufacturer's standings, winning comfortably from X-Ray Mini. We are heading for a thrilling conclusion in the T3s. The American trio of Mitch Guthrie, Austin Jones and Seth Quintero are separated by just nine points. There are no fewer than 37 vehicles taking part, with lots of familiar faces and some new ones, including the winner of the T4s at this year's Dakar, Eric Gokchow. 
The 18-year-old hit the ground running with victories in the prologue and stage one, but he then broke the rear differential and the prop shaft on stage two and had to retire with engine problems on stage three. There was still plenty for Polish fans to celebrate, though, as Eric's father, Marek Gokshal, claimed overall victory at the rally. With his brother, Michal, also taking a stage win, it was an excellent week for the BPR-supported Energy Landia rally team. The World Championship fight turned out to be an elimination race. Jones dropped out of contention due to a broken trailing arm on stage four. Meanwhile, Guthrie had catastrophic engine issues on stage three. He and Kellen Walsh couldn't quite make it three overall victories in a row after Mexico and Argentina, but they did win two stages in their Taurus T3 Max. That opened the door for Quintero, and he charged right through it. The American staying consistent, and despite a 20-minute penalty for finishing stage three with two spare wheels missing, he held on to take an emotional World Championship victory. I feel like we've just been on the cusp of it every single time, and we've, you know, we've had our ups and our downs. I don't know how much we won by, but we won. We almost won the rally, too, so that would have been awesome, but god dang, does it feel good. This one really went down to the wire, with just 11 points separating the three Americans in the final standings. There was some chopping and changing in the T4s, where João Ferreira took overall victory. The Portuguese driver had been racing a T3 for X-Ray Yamaha until Morocco, but he made a fine start to life with South Racing. Rokas Pachuska had already secured the world title at the previous round, so he was trying his hand in the T3s. The Lithuanian retired after a crash on stage two, but he still finished the rally on the podium. Shinsuke Umeda finished every round in his Extreme Plus Polaris to finish second overall with Eric Goksha in third. Janus van Kasteren secured the world title in the trucks as his biggest rival Martin Matic was disqualified for using non-compliant turbocharger restrictors. The Dutchman doubling up after his victory at the Dakar. Thomas Vratny was the highest W2RC finisher in Morocco, so he moved ahead of Matic in the final standings. And finally, the W2RC Next Gen tryouts were held just after the conclusion of the Rally to Morocco, giving some of the sport's best young talents a chance to test out different vehicles. We don't know exactly what lies ahead, but this may well be a glimpse into Rally Road's future. It's been a long and spectacular season, and the final celebrations match the efforts the riders and drivers have put in over the course of five grueling rounds. It's a special feeling indeed to become a World Rally Ride champion. Thanks for watching. See you in 2024.